Hey everyone, it's Dane again. Okay, so let's talk about our reset line. That's the next thing we need to hook up. And uh, that is this line right here. So near as I can tell, because weirdly information is somewhat difficult and I think it's harder uh, to find than it ought to be for this at this point. Uh, but this point right here, this via, should be reset out. Now that corresponds to the third pin up here. Uh, so you could technically hook up to that uh, or to this via. I like to keep things kind of close, so I'm gonna um, hook up here. We'll need to cut our trace here. And some of the installations I've seen, they cut this trace here as well, but I don't think that you actually have to for your line in. I think you can just hook your line in right here. So yeah, let's go ahead and get our reset line ready. So the reason that this is a good place to cut the line is because there's a good bit uh, of empty space on either side of it. So it just makes kind of a naturally clean place to cut the trace here. Okay, our trace should be cut, but let's go ahead and test continuity and see if we're gonna test this point in here. All right, our trace is cut. Very good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is scrape away a little bit of the uh, mask that is the solder. Yeah, just a little bit of this mask here that's at the end of this VF. I wanna make sure that the spot is easy to weld to. All right, there we go. And then we are going to tin this point. All right, now for this, I've set up blue and white wires. So we're gonna do blue for now, white for in. All right, let's see if I can even get that down into that via. This might be a little too big for that. That's, uh, that's okay. There's other ways I can hook that up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just sort of tin that via and make my own contact point there. Let's see, I've made a little blob right, right there with that via. And that is what we're going to go to. My wire gauge was just a little too big to actually set that down inside there. And actually, you know what? I have a little too much wire for the size. Cut just a little bit off. There we go. Print in. Let's hook it up. Perfect. There we go. We are hooked in for our output. There are reset out, and we're going to pick up our reset in right here. All right, there we go. Good, solid welds. All right, let's do a little bit of heat shrink just to keep that all looking nice and pretty. So I believe that blue was our out and white was our in. Double check. Yep, blue is out, white is in. Don't have my uh, helping hands hooked up at the moment. Definitely uh, having some of those hooked up makes it easier to tin your wires, but I usually try to just find something to hang it off of. Makes it easy enough to get to. Okay, so white was in, blue was out. So we want more flux. There is our reset in. And here is our reset out. Okay, not bad at all. So at this point, our I.O. board is good to go except for one thing. Uh, we need to uh, tell it which type signal it's using, high or low. The top loaders are set. We need to jump that jumper right there, just like that. If you were putting this in the front loader, you would use uh, the high 
jumper. So I won't be able to get too close because of the manual setting, uh, but you can see that our bead of solder is bridging the bottom two pins, setting it to low. All right, so uh, I think after this, uh, we'll go ahead and hook up that expansion audio. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, that's kind of fanned out, so I'm gonna have to trim that a little bit to get that to go up into our via. I just wanna shear it off at just a little bit of an angle. Run that up through. There we go. And so you can see that I'm running a expansion audio wire up into that via. Actually, I'll just kind of stay put on its own. That's nice. Flux. There we go. And it looks like at some point a solder blog got dripped on the board. Definitely need to make sure that isn't. Always got to keep an eye out for that sort of thing. It can ruin your whole project. All right, so our expansion audio is now routed in. Uh, let's go ahead and hook up our CPU lines one and two. Yellow was line one. Yellow was line one and blue was line two. Just to be extra double, triple sure, I can look down in there and see that yep, yellow is line one. Checking my reference to be sure. All right, and uh, according to the instructions on Tim Worthington's page, audio A is in one of CPU, so yellow, and audio B is blue. That's what I thought. So yellow is a right there, and blue is right above it. Well, that didn't stay put for me like at all. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so we are now properly routed from our CPU for our pin one and pin two audio. So at this point, we are ready to wire up our uh, SNES multi -O. Okay, so we did a little test fit here just to see how this is all gonna fit uh, in the case, and I think it's gonna fit great. I clipped out that little piece of uh, metal inside there to allow the expansion audio to come up through. And uh, yeah, this is all looking really good. There's already a space under the power switch uh, for the rest of our uh, reset and control room. So this is all sitting in here uh, really, really pretty good. So now we can go ahead and run our RGB lines to our SNES multi -app. So I think the way I'm going to route those is basically to come under the board and then around the slot. I think that will might have to sort of come along under the side and then over and up. But I'm going to just search, set this down and see. Nothing wrong with kind of testing your fit as you go, make sure that everything's going to sit properly. Yeah, so it looks like as long as I sort of route things along the side here, it should be good. So uh, we're doing regular composite out, which would be this one here. So I'll wait for that. So, all right, let's go ahead and start in on our RGB. Sometimes I just gotta talk through it while I'm, you know, while I'm doing it. Let's hook up our C-Sync first, which I usually like to use as yellow. Same sort of deal. Don't have any particular reason why I usually do it that way. I just kind of do. But, you know, having your own consistent method can help you stay, uh, you know, kind of know what you're doing across multiple projects and that sort of thing. Nothing wrong with that. All right, there is our C-Sync line. Next up is red. You can do that with a red wire. Okay, I do not have a green wire, so white will be my, my green. Green and blue will be a blue wire. Excellent, those all look like solid welds. All right, and then I will be bundling these just because it makes it easy when I'm trying to uh, hook things up down at the uh, SNES multi-out, I'll have a better idea of what's going on. So, let's use a green heat shrink tubing for our RGB. Let's 
kind of ugly the way that bunched up right there. I'm not super happy with that, so I'm just going to remove that. I'm not really sure what the best method would be to keep it from doing that. I'm not really sure you can. Well, that's better anyway. It's fine. I want them to be able to flex a little bit and turn here. So that's all the closer I need to get anyway. Great shrink. Yeah, it's kind of funny because I'll really want to uh, bunch up on you. Let's see here. How can I... Okay, so it looks like I kind of need to go red, yellow on top, white, blue underneath. And you know what? I don't even really need another one. I think we're just going to cut that off right about there. That should be plenty of wire. Yeah, I think I'll do one more bundle. There we go, that's pretty good. That's all pretty good. Get even there. All right, there is our RGB cable. Let's go ahead and strip that and tin it and get it ready. I'm also realizing I may have forgot conductor. I may need a five volt line running. So right now I don't have one hooked up and I might need to uh, go back and adjust uh, to make sure that that hooks up properly. Which is no big deal. Alright, let's tune these conductors. Okay, trim these a little bit just to make sure those are all going to go in the, the multi out the way we want. All right, those all look pretty good. So next, we need to take a look at our SNES by now. <laughs> 